Welcome back, everybody. In today's video, I'm going to finally be talking about function composition and using JavaScript as our language of choice to explain it. So there are a few things to cover before we get into co function composition, which is where a the input of one function is comes from the output of another function. One thing you've probably heard about JavaScript it, that allows for function composition is that Functions are referred to as first-class citizens or first-class values. And what that means is that you can pass around functions just like you can pass around any other data in your, func in your program. So for example, this output here for uh, the function for being executed, which returns four, is actually strictly equal to four. So if we run that, uh, run, it will be true. So as far as JavaScript is concerned, the return value four is the same as if I had just written four. So what that allows us to do then is pass any return value into another function, and that allows us to chain functions together or compose them into a pipeline that will take one input and give us another output. And now I mentioned that we need to think about functions as uh, taking a type and returning another type. And what that means <clears throat> is that when you're dealing with function compositions, you want to try to keep your functions pure whenever possible, because that will allow for easy function composition, and it will allow, the, your, it'll allow you to just focus on the types that are being input and being output, and allow you to compose very, very easily. So for example, if we have a function that takes a type of A, and returns a type of A, then we know we can pass it into another function that takes a type of A, regardless of what that function returns. So as long as the input of one function lines up with the output of another function, then we can pass them together. Likewise, A outputting B, the type of B can then be input into a function that takes a type of B, and that could return a type of C. And so what our pipeline would look like if we composed it all together would be A to A to B, to C, and we've gone from A to C, so then the function that would result from this composition would just be a function that takes an A and returns a C, even though no function that we've created up here actually goes from A to C. But the composition of all those functions together goes from A to C. So I'm using letters here, but this could be a number to a number, then a number to an object, and then an object to a string, for example. So that's the basics of what we need to understand to start doing function composition, and I'll move into some examples below. But one thing I want to cover first is functions that don't have a return value. So if we create a function that takes C and return, doesn't return anything, we can assume one of two things. Either that function is pointless, it just swallows up a value and does nothing, or it creates a side effect. So that's one way that you can determine whether your functions are pure. If they're having an effect, but they're not giving you a return value, then you know that it's a side effect, because it's not either the input or the output. Of course, you can create side effects without, uh, or with also having a return value, but that's one way that you can spot those sorts of things. So I'll console log that, or I'll comment that out, and let's move down here to our examples. So. This first function here is an example of something that is not a pure function. So print takes any value and it doesn't return anything. All it does is log it out to the console. I've got add one, which takes a number and returns a number, but it adds one to that number. And then double it takes a number and returns a number and doubles it. Well, the original number doubled. So if we want to create a composed function called add one double it, we can, based on JavaScript's basic syntax, we can simply pass that value from double it or from add one into double it. So if we take double it and it accepts the value from add one, add one is going to need a number passed in, so I'll passing a value there, which means then that this has to be a function that takes a value.
And just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to do anything that's a new function with the function keyword, anything that's a composition with an arrow function, just so that it's stylistically easy to spot those differences while I'm doing these uh, examples. So now if we run this, uh, oh, I'm missing a bracket at the end. There we go. Or parentheses, my apologies. So what this will do is it'll take two, it'll add one, like this, and then it will double it. And so we get six. So that works pretty well, right? We now have a function that we can call as many times as we want that does add one and double it. And of course, if we wanted to add one and then double it twice, we could just wrap that in another double it. And now we would expect to get 12, which we do. And that's all well and good, but this is not a nice syntax to work with. I mean, I already forgot one of the parentheses just because there's so many of them. And we could start splitting it onto separate uh, lines. We could use some white space to make it easier to read um, and compose that way. But realistically, if you look at any functional programming library, you're going to see that they provide you with a compose function. But instead of bringing one of those functions or methods in, I suggest that we just make our own. So let's do that. Now, if we're thinking about taking a bunch of functions and making them into one function, so here we had three functions, and we make it into one function, what are we doing? We are reducing a list of functions, right? So we know that we're going to use reduce, and if we're using reduce, we'll need to have a predicate function. So I'm going to call the predicate function apply. You can call it whatever you want. Apply isn't great in JavaScript because we do have a dot apply method, but I think it will make sense just for the small scope of this tutorial uh, to use the keyword apply. So we'll call it apply, and it will be a function that's going to take uh, one function and another function, and then it will return the first function applied as the input to the second or the second function. And that's it. So this is just like what's going on in here. It's going to take our first function, pass it in to fn1 and take our second function and pass it into fn2. And that would create for us, for example, add one, double it. If we pass in add one and pass in double it. Now we can create our actual compose function. So this will be a function that will take, it will need an array of functions and it will need a value. And it will take that array, it will reduce it, and it will reduce it with the apply predicate function, and it will need an initial value, which will be our value. So in this case, if we were to pass in two, two would become the initial value, which would then be the input to fn1, because or fn2, because the value would actually be fn1. And that would then produce a three, and then uh, the three would be passed in from add one, to double it, and that would give us six. So it'll behave exactly the same way, except we'll be giving it a value to start. So what that would mean then is if we wanted to create an add one double it using our compose function, then it would look something like this. Do compose, <clears throat> and we pass in add one, double it, and the value of two. But of course, we don't, well, this would give us the actual output, so we don't want to do it like that. We would need to make that the value and make this the, the fun, oops, whoa. Mistyped something there. Uh, so this will be a function that takes a value and it'll behave exactly the same way. Sorry, I was getting ahead of myself here. I'm missing, oh, I'm missing my curly brace at the end. And that needs to be a return. There we go. And so now it behaves exactly the same way. But of course, why would we do this, right? Because now every time we 
create a new function, we have to make it a, or every time we want to compose something, we have to put compose inside the body of our function as a return value. It would be much better if we could instead just call compose on an array of functions and get a new function back. And of course we can do that if we want to, if we are able to passing our value at a different call site. And what do we do if we want to pass something in at a different call site? If you've been watching the previous videos, you know, sorry if you can hear those motorcycles. We can do that, of course, with currying. So if we curry our compose function, then it will take an array of functions, and then it will return a function that's waiting for a value, and then that will return a uh, return the function body. Oops, I need to remove that. And so now we can pass in our array to partially apply compose. We'll get back a function that's waiting for a value, which is exactly the same as what we had before. But all we have to do to create a function is just passing our list of functions to the compose function. It can behaves exactly the same way. And the beauty about this is that we could create this nice chain of functions that we had, and then we could pass in more if we wanted. We could pass in another doublet, we could pass in another add one, we could pass in another add one. Uh, we could create some new functions and pass those in. Oops, I didn't capitalize the I there. And it will just give us our output because all the types line up. Now, imagine that we create a new function and it's going to be called state make. And it's going to take state make. It's going to be a function, but it's going to take any value and it's going to return a string. So what that means is we can't put it before any of our functions that are expecting numbers. But what state make will do, so let me type this out first, is it'll take a value and it will return a string with that value interpolated into it. So it'll just say your value is, and we'll use some template strings. And so now we can put this guy at the very end of our composition. And we should get that output to the console. Your value is 14. And again, because we, if we just look at our types, we know what order we can put things in and what order we can't. So obviously, I can't move state make to prior to this guy without getting some weird stuff happening. JavaScript's type coercion is very forgiving, so it's going to give us this bonkers output where it gives us our value and then it's a string, so it just adds the string of one to the end. But if you just start from the first principles of thinking about the inputs and outputs of your functions and lining up the types, then you'll be able to very dependably and very easily do some function composition. So this is a great way to uh, simplify your program so that if you had a big series of transformations that needed to occur in your program. You could bundle it up into one function, and then maybe you could create an API on the module.exports object or something like that if you're working with Node. And then you could just have your add one, double it on that. And you've abstracted away all this complexity, and all you've had to write are very simple, testable, manageable functions that when you compose them together, do something much more complex. So that's the purpose of function composition. If you, again, if you create this little compose function using currying, it's very easy to work with. I hope this blew your mind as much as it blows mine whenever I think about how awesome composition is. I use it all the time now that I'm familiar with the use cases. Uh, you probably won't notice it until you've done it a few times, and then you'll wonder how you ever programmed without it. So this is a big tool in your functional programming tool belt. If you liked the video, like the video. Uh, actually, just like the video anyway. I don't care if you liked it. I'm just kidding. But it would be nice. Uh, leave a comment on anything you'd like me to cover in the future. 
comment on any questions that you might have, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.